Now, before we begin, a couple things I wanted to say. First, I'm trying out this new audio thing. I'm doing it in this video, and I did it in my last video. So if you guys could tell me if these two videos sound any better or worse than my previous videos, I would really appreciate that. Secondly, I have made a video like this before, and like I said in that video, my drawing is... It's okay, it's pretty decent, but for whatever reason, when I start to try to draw digitally, it just goes straight downhill. And in this video, I'm going to be drawing digitally and really quickly. So basically what I'm saying is, you know, prepare yourselves. Now the topic of this video, money, or you know, that's my attempt at a pound sign. But anyways, it's money. Specifically, why is it that we cannot print more money? This is a question I see quite a bit. When this question comes up, I usually see two different kinds of people. There's group A, which is, well, obviously, it's pretty obvious why we can't print out lots of money. And they, they do understand. It's not like they're being snobby. They legitimately do understand why we can't print out any more money. And then there's the other group of people that's just completely baffled. Like, why is it that we cannot print any more money. Money is an object that we know how to make. Why can we not just make more of it? And it's a very understandable confusion if you don't understand the basics of how m the monetary system works. Now, the quick answer is the more of something there is, the less valuable it is. The less of something there is, the more valuable it is. So if you have more money, it's less valuable. If you have less money, it's more valuable. Now, 99.9999% of the time, that one sentence explains everything. It pretty much just comes into focus for most people. It's not a particularly complicated concept. But I thought it'd be interesting to go over this concept with a little bit more depth. Because even though it's not necessarily more complicated than that, I think there's a couple layers to it that we don't always appreciate. Plus, if you don't understand this concept yet, this should pretty much explain it. Okay, so let's go back to the time in the befores. Before we had money, how is it that we did business transactions? Because people still bought and sold stuff. That was still a thing. But we really didn't have any form of currency or money to do these transactions in. So what do we use? Perhaps your immediate thought is, oh, well, we had metal. We used the metal to make coins. And that's what we used, right? Yeah, that's true, we did do that, but that's still money. That's still currency. What did we do even before that was a figment of somebody's imagination, right? Before even that. Hmm. Hmm. Huh. Tough one. Oh, maybe, maybe, right? We exchange words like promises, right? That would work, right? Right? I mean, people in business are always super trustworthy, right? Eh, maybe not. Oh, I know. Perhaps we use leaves. We use leaves to trade stuff. But uh, that uh, that would still kind of be the same thing. It'd just be leaves instead of coins. Pretty much the same concept. Hmm. I don't know. What do we do? Eh, I'm, I'm making it sound more complicated than it actually is. We, we just traded things for other things. Like today, it's either I make something or do something, somebody gives me money, I take the money, I give it to somebody else, they do something or make something, and then I get the thing that I want. I never actually want the money, I want the thing I could get for the money, right? But that's not what they did back then. Back then, it was as simple as I have something you want, and you have something I want. So, for instance, let's say I have a set of shoes. It's gonna... Oh, okay, that looks more like a hot dog. But let's pretend that looks like a set of shoes. And you have an apple. You know, I, I picked an apple because I thought it'd be easy to draw. I was, I was so wrong. But anyways, I say I want that apple. You say I want those shoes. Simple enough. I get the apple. You get the shoes. I don't go hungry. And you get to keep your feet. Right? Simple easy transaction. Here's the thing. What determines how valuable this apple and these pairs of shoes are, right? What determines their value? Well, it's really simple. 
basically, it's how easy it is to get a set of shoes, right? So let's say, for instance, okay, let's say, for instance, somebody just went crazy and made like a bajillion shoes. So there are shoes literally, right? Like, like there's a shoe over here. This is, oh, this is even worse than the first type. But let's pretend, like, this is a weird, very weird, odd scenario that I don't think has ever happened in the history of mankind. Somebody went crazy, made a ton of shoes. Shoes are everywhere. You could literally walk out your house and grab, like, five sets of shoes if you wanted, right? They're everywhere. They're littered all over the place, and they're perfectly good shoes. I'm not going to want those, sh or you're not going to want those shoes for your apple, because apples, even though they technically grow on trees, are a lot harder to get. They only grow during a certain time of the season. They have to be on a specific plant. You have to nurture the plant. An apple is a lot harder to get. You're not going to want the shoes for that apple because you could get the shoes like super easy. Now, let's say the shoemaker has died. He is dead. He's in the ground. There's no one around to make shoes. And all of the shoes that he's made before have either been taken, stolen, burned. So there are very few shoes around. And everybody wants these shoes because, you know, without shoes, you got blistery feet. You might even have to cut them off depending on how damaged they get. So shoes right now, you're, you're really going to want those shoes, right? Because you want to keep your feet. You want to make sure your feet don't blister and you don't feel extreme pain from the lack of shoes. At that point, I'm going to be like, listen... These are, like, the only shoes in town, okay? You, you can't find more shoes like this. I can't just take that one apple, man. You're going to be like, okay, I got, like, this big basket of apples. I don't, I don't even know what I, I... Looks like a bowl with stripes on it and some lumpy stuff in it, but that's a basket of apples. Pretend. I'm like, okay, I gotta need more than that, because this is, these are some pretty rare shoes. He's gonna be like, okay. More apple. God, it's even worse. He says, two baskets of apples. I say, okay, fine. Two baskets of apples for this one set of shoe. And when you don't, when there's like no shoes around, it's totally worth two baskets of apples. But if the shoes look everywhere, you're not you're not even going to want to give them one apple. You can get the shoes for free. There's no point. And this seems kind of obvious, right? And it is. It's really obvious. But this is essentially the origins of money, right? So it, it's not just that money replaced this. Money came from this. Because people think money as like the separate entity from every other physical object. Like every other physical object has a price of money. But money itself isn't a thing. It's just the thing that you use to pay for the thing. That's not how it is. You need to think of money as an actual physical object. So let's say, for instance, um, let's say I have a laptop, right? That's, that's just a poorly drawn rectangle, but say it's a laptop. Normally, you'd say, okay, the laptop's worth 73 pounds, right? You Instead of looking at it as the laptop's worth 73 pounds, you have to look at it as 73 pounds is worth one laptop. Okay, so now that you understand that concept, I want you to keep it in mind as we go on. So we're going to go back to the shoe example. I'm just going to... Okay. You know, you'd think that I'd get better as the video goes on because I'd have more practice. You'd be wrong. Uh, somehow, they continue to get worse. But whatever. That's a shoe somehow. Don't ask me how. Now, if you recall, with the shoe, as they went up or as more became available... Nobody really wanted to give up anything for them because they could get them anywhere for next to nothing, if not just nothing. There was no reason to give up anything of value. But when there were almost no shoes available, you were willing to give up almost anything. You gave me two baskets of apples for the sake of this one set of shoes because you couldn't find it anywhere else. You needed this set of shoes. Now, 
imagine for a second that the same thing happened with money. Let's just say for hypothetical sake, the government decided we're going to print up money like crazy so everybody can have some and we're going to scatter it everywhere so anybody can grab it at any time. So now you have, let's just say they're packed in bundles of 73. Don't ask me why. I'm kind of stuck with that number. And they're bundled everywhere and they're scattered across the streets. You can literally walk outside and there's like 10 sets of these things at your doorstep. Now you'd be thinking, wow, that's amazing. I can go out and get money and I don't have to work for it. That's awesome, right? Now let me ask you this. If somebody walks into your house and says, hey, I like that TV. I want to give you, just for argument's sake, 200 pounds for that TV. And that TV, you only paid 70 pounds. All right? You're, most of the time, you'd be like, oh my gosh, I'm totally going to take that deal. That's like profit I don't that's more than what I paid for the TV when it was brand new but consider the fact that you can go out walk outside grab 200 pounds for free why would you give up your TV like unless unless you were trying to get rid of it so that you can buy a bigger TV there's really no reason to do that and there nobody's gonna give you a bigger TV for that amount of money no matter how much money you're gonna get because they're gonna be under the same situation they're gonna be like why would I give you this TV for however much money you have when I can easily go out and accumulate that much money there's no reason to do it they can get money the uh, just as easily as you can so there's no incentive for them to give you the TV for the money that you have so when you understand that the shoe, okay, and 73 pounds essentially act as the same kind of object in an economic sense, several things become a lot more clear to you. Not just the fact that money becomes more valuable or less valuable the more there is. So when you understand, let's say you have a hamburger, right? That That's not even, hang on. All right, and let's say this hamburger costs five pounds, right? You need to look at it not as you paying five pounds for this burger, but rather you are trading five pounds to obtain this burger. Other person gets five pounds while you get the burger. It is a trade. Most people look at, again, most people look at this as a payment. And that's technically not wrong, but because of that, it makes these kinds of concepts very difficult to understand. But once you understand, it's just a new form of trade. It's a more complex form of trade. Everything becomes so much more simple. Not just the concept of, again, money becomes less valuable the more there is, but even just other basic economic concepts. Basic economics, guys, is not complicated. Obviously, it's a different story when we get into advanced economics, but when we're talking about basic economics, it really is not complicated. I'm not explaining thermodynamics here, but most people think it's complicated because their, their perspective is just a little off. Most people, again, look at this as I am paying $5 for the burger. When an economist would look at it and say, I am trading $5 for this burger. It's an equal exchange. And when you understand that, you understand how the economic system, at least at a very basic level, works. And maybe I'll do another video going more in depth than that. But the reason why it's so important for you to understand why the system works like this is not just so you can understand this whole money thing, but so that you understand the fundamentals of how the world that you live in, that you are supported in, works. All right, well, that's going to be it for this video. Make sure to hit that like, that like button and that subscribe button. And don't forget the bell but button because I post every other week. Make sure to make sure to hit all three of these things. So until next time, hear nothing and listen to all. Bye guys.